I share with you my greetings, my blessings, my friendship. I am honored to be in your company on this beautiful night. I bring with you the energy of those I love dearest, and we as a collective share all of our fondest love from the cores of our hearts to you. Please feel invited to open your hearts and let our love flow into you. My bride is to my right, my best friend to my left, My angelic friends are all around. Our sweet soap matron, your kind medicine medicine you. He would like to place his hands upon your head and bless you. And he is. He has messages. But he is here for all of you. Each of you has an angel who is, when you are not in life, your tutor and your friend standing beside you, behind you. May they place their hands upon your shoulders. And so they do. Very few of you remember the first moment you were born, coming out of your mother's bodies. But in truth, you were born long before when you sat with the very friend who has their hands upon your shoulders at this moment, when you sat together and planned this life. The first question is, why would you come to life? Are you here for self? Are you here for service? Or what combination therein? Who do you plan to meet in your life? What impact will you have? What karmic lessons do you need to resolve before you can move to your next stage of incarnation evolution. Planning a life is a very detailed affair because at this moment, most people do not even remember their childhood much less the moment they were born, much less the time in your mother's womb, much less the life you planned before you became physical. Much detailing must occur to help you not to follow your path, but to consistently find your way back to your path. Some fall so far off their path, they design a new path, and the one they planned on living can be reserved for another life. Just as you live your day, this is how you live your life, and this is how you live your many lives and your true existence between and outside of your lives. When you plan your life 
must be one of great healing. You must become a being who can manage the great healing. If you wish to have a life comparable to the Dalai Lama, the Mother Teresa, Buddha, myself, my friends, you may live many lives before to prepare, to build your stratification of skills and understanding, to give depth to your energy. At this time, with Earth in such disrepair, there are many who are here to help heal the Earth. There are many alive who had not planned to incarnate as human ever again, but they have returned to help heal the Earth. There are many aliens and light beings who are here in human form to help heal the Earth. There are some who have said, I am not yet ready to come into life with a clean karmic balance. So do you give yourselves great difficulties early in your life? And you know, if you come out of this alive, you will be clean, your slate is clean, and you are ready to heal the earth. There are many who are compressing three or 30 years of trauma into as quick a time as possible so they can get beyond that karmic housekeeping for their true purpose. The star seeds, crystals and indigos, what you call the spectrum children these are the most impacted. And there are many who had not planned on this life being earth healing, who are older and are suddenly awakening. This awakening may have been planned for this life or may have been planned for your next life. Humanity has sped up the need for the healing. There are many of us who are pushing ourselves. I say us because we were planning on helping in the next generation, but we are helping now. Those of you who have been through trauma no, trauma occurs for one of two reasons. Either it is to clear your karmic slate, at which point you will look back on the trauma and realize how you are emotionally detached from it. It has no hold on you. And you have grown from it. You have evolved because of this trauma. It helped you to become whom you need to be. These are soul contracted traumas. Or there is trauma because you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or because someone has gone off of their life path and they are violating their soul contracts. Or because there are those who see your light and they wish to diminish you before you have a chance to shine. These are not as life is meant to be. These are not appropriate. They serve no purpose. And the only way to live, having been through those, 
is to either suffer for life or to use it as a karmic educational tool and grow beyond it, evolve yourself so it no longer has hold on you and claim your power and light. You see, we who love you are not pleased with the unnecessary trauma of the beautiful light beings. We are here to help. We wish for you to use us in any way you need to grow yourselves to the point where you are only beings of love, joy, and lighter, kinder emotions, including adventure, which we know is important to those in this room. My beloved Mary and Judas are calming me. I make like life difficult for my host when I become so emotional. Understand, the plan for humans was that all difficulties were part of the growth cycle. We were all surprised by humans who chose to become mean. And we are trying very hard to help all humans evolve away from that unnecessary frequency. That day will come and we appreciate the valiance, the stalwart nature of all of you for your offer to grow beyond the hurt to the love. This is how your planet will heal. You will be surprised when you are standing in a crowd of humans, all of whom are beings of love. And you see all the joy in everyone. When you share your stories of your past, each of you will have your hardships to share, and yet they will no longer have hold on you. We wish to help you with this. We wish to help you to grow to joy, planet-wide planet joy. When you live in joy, your empathic and telepathic skills become more refined. which will make it even more important for you to connect with those who are pursuing or living in joy. You may help others, but the best help is to put your hand out and say, rise up, take my hand, and let us go forward as equals. If you give a friend a hand and they throw you to the ground, release their hand. Become their inspiration from a distance until they are ready to take your hand and rise up. It may be in this life 
or the next, or you are not the hands they are meant to take. But those who reject your offer are easily replaced by those who are looking for someone to offer a hand. Do not drain yourself by helping those who do not wish for your help. Allow those you help to increase your energy as you are increasing theirs. This is how we did this in my time. Everyone has a hand they are happy to take. But not everyone will in this moment take a hand that gives them joy. Every hand extended in joy, if you are a little patient, will find the right hand to reach for you. This is not greedy. This is kindness to self as well as others. This is how we grow together. And you will find then when you put your hand out for the next person, the one you just helped puts their hand out and more hands, more hands, more hands, keep going out until the world is filled with beings holding hands in friendship. This is the plan. This is not naivete. This is the plan. Our young people, invite your elders to give you their hands. And soon, you will find you are ready to offer your hands to others. There is no need to stay in trauma when joy is calling to you. Do you have questions on this? Would you like this path to be your future? So it is. As each of you planned your life with a mentoring angel and your guardian angel, you may not remember the life you planned and the life you've lived, we guarantee has not followed that plan exactly. Connect with the one who has their hands on your shoulders. Invite your guardian angel into your life. They are your guides. They will help you find your path and navigate it with expert care. Are there any questions on any subjects? I have several, but I'm going to give the other people a chance. Why don't we start with you? No, let's let the other people ask. Does anyone have a question? They give it back to you. I'm after some history here, so excuse me if I'm too specific. You mentioned a, a best friend to your left. Yes. Is that person named in the New Testament? This is Judas the Pure, and okay. my bride is Mary the Bold. Okay. Um, would you tell me a little bit about your relationship with uh, the guy that's identified in the New Testament as Previously known as Saul. He was a jokester. He was kind, sometimes confused, and um,
a little impatient. Before life, the one you call Paul advocated to be in our experience. And he was very specific. He knows his strengths and he knows his weaknesses. He wished to bring the best of himself to our experience. However, he needed a challenge. He needed to find his path. He was 25 years old before he began to remember how he had planned his life. Do you have a specific question about him? Hmm. Um, I read, I read, I should say, read Paul when I was young. But I read him to be homophobic, and I read him to be um, misogynistic. No. That was written by those who came after him. They translated his work. Understand, much of the work of my people was stolen and rewritten for political gain. If you do not wish your followers to be free thinkers, if you wish them to be sheep, you will throw fear upon them. Bah. No, we worked together to tell everyone, you are connected to God. You do not need anyone to connect you to God. Each of you is equal. Each of you is amazing. Each of you has skills and talents. Each of you are brothers and sisters. Paul had humor. He loved to joke, but upon our deaths, all of our work was changed. No, not homophobic. There is nothing wrong with people loving whom they love. I tell you that, and I said that then. This was for political gain. Don't be fooled. That is correct. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Wonderful. It, it ran me out of the Christian church and I became a disciple of an entity I know as Jeshua, who I think is probably the person I'm talking to right now. No, whenever anyone says, connect with God, and then they tell you fear and hate, you are receiving false testament. No matter what faith, God is love. Did you know each and every one of you is an aspect of a dream of God? And the time will come when all of us will return to God just as your soul creates this dream of your life, so you may gain experience for your soul, your soul is a dream of God, so God may gain experience. And the time will come when we each, all of us, everything that was created by God will return to God and God will feel very satisfied. So God would never say, love me through hate. But God does say, the more experience all beings have, the more interesting I will be when I reabsorb you. 
So it is okay to love the misogynists and the haters because they are aspects of God that you would rather not be so that God later can have a fully rounded state of being. Believe me, when we return to God, all of these experiences will be as seen through love. The greatest haters, the Hitlers, etc., will also be seen through love because all the hate will be gone. Just the understanding, the understanding as a psychiatrist would understand the inner workings, the mechanisms, the cause, the effect, everything will be returned to love with greater understanding and greater appreciation for the beauty of love. When you stand in love and you allow yourself to be love, it's best to look at those who hate and have no connection. You don't need that energy in you. Or if you can love one who hates, you may send love to them, but do not receive their hate. Do you understand this? Absolutely. The time will come when each of you and I are one. For you know, I was a human soul. I am a human soul. I just had a few more lives than some of you do, or I decided to take my life path, my life's path in a different direction than you do. To be an earth keeper is as important and potent as being coming an ascended master because we are all one. Your root chakra and your crown chakra are one. Your solar plexus and sacral chakra are one. Your heart and your throat are one. Your third eye and your throat and heart are one. Your root chakra and your heart are one. Do you understand? You and I are one. Some of you may wish to experience more of the root chakra of the one more whereas I went to the heart and the crown, but we are one. Learn your lessons, find your way back to joy. That is the secret of life. If you climb to the Himalaya mountains and find an old yogi and ask him, what's the secret of life? This is what he will tell you, or she. Learn your lessons, find your way back to joy. Are there any questions? I have shards in many people and I am healing mandala. Many of the ancient mandalas have fallen to disrepair or are damaged. I am healing them. But just as when I came to life, yes, everyone in this room gave me shards of your soul and many, many others. It is now my turn to give many of you shards of my soul. I have in this room those whom I knew when I was in life. You know who you are. My little cousins, my brother, my friends. Many of you are carrying shards of me or my apostles, my family, my friends. You are carrying shards of others who are like me. Those whom you gave shards to 
and now they are returning them. Invite shards of the great souls, and by great I mean one who came to life with many shards to help them. Invite shards of great souls to join you in your body. And if they are here in your body already, invite them to activate. The more you are activated within you, the more your path ahead will be joyous and effective. Is this not right? My little cousins, my brothers, my friends, my sisters. I am wearying this body. It is time for me to leave. wish you a fond farewell, but know I am with you whenever you wish, sometimes when you don't wish. My love is with you, and remember your angels are with you. Blessed be. Oh, wow.